Hello and welcome to your first Watson video. Um, if you are watching this video and have no idea what Watson is, you're probably watching the wrong video. You need to go back a little bit, do some research about what IBM Watson can do. Um, but just in short, it's a collection of cognitive uh, computing services that IBM has made available um, for a call with an API. And they're really powerful. They're awesome. A lot of them can do a lot of different things. And uh, we're going to learn how to use just one of them because, as you may be aware, if you're in any of my other classes aside from AP Computer Science, or if you're in my AP Computer Science class, I'm telling you, uh, if, if you know how to use one of these services, you can use all of them. Um, so we're going to focus on the Alchemy Language service. Um, Alchemy Language basically allows you to load in text samples. So uh, let's just get a random block of text. Let's just say, well, I'm going to do this in the lens of I want to create a tool that will allow people to compare student responses with an exemplar response, hopefully preparing a tool to automatically grade free response questions to save teachers immense amounts of time. So let's just put in a sample response to a question. Um, my hypothesis is that uh, if you change the type of plastic, the piece will stretch differently because it's made of different material. Sure. All right, that's just a sample. Let's see what it looks like. So it breaks it down into these things called entities, which are kind of like nouns that it finds are, are important, and it looks like it didn't find anything important. It breaks it down into keywords and their relevance to the to the text, and you can see that different materials is a keyword with around 94% relevance, and hypothesis is a keyword with around 83% relevance. Okay, and these scores, remember, these are just like relevance to the, the meaning of, of the phrase, and how Watson does this is through um, one of the methods that you've seen in your lesson before watching this video. And, you know, it's, it's actually quite complicated to, to program a, a, a machine that does this, which is, you know, it's almost a miracle they've been able to do this. However, what's really easy to do is it's really easy to use it because Watson conveniently pipes all this stuff back into in, in JSON, which we've been using in all of our Apps 1 and Apps 2 classes forever. So it's stuff that you guys really can do, and we're going to learn how to do it. Um, so that's the keyword thing. Taxonomy is kind of like... I guess how it relates to different concepts. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot of things that just uh, elongated man. You know, the shorter the text, the harder this thing has. The harder time this has. But you know, maybe this is not the greatest example. Um, but the point is, it's it's doable. All right. So how do we do this? First thing we need to do is kind of get ourselves set up. So anything that uses you know an API like Watson needs to be able to collect input from a user. So I want to basically start by making something that looks like this. Now this is going to require us to install Bootstrap on a text file. And if you're in my other classes, you know exactly how to do that. If you're in my AP class, um, basically what you need to do is you need to go to getbootstrap.com. You need to download Bootstrap. So when you download it, you're going to get this. It's a zip file. You undo the zip file. All right, so there's there's all of Bootstrap's components right here. We're going to need all of them. And uh, what we need to do is make a new folder for our project. So I've done Watson example, which I now have to delete everything out of. Bye-bye. And you can take all of the Bootstrap files that you just downloaded, and you can just drag them into that folder you made on your desktop, right there. All right, we also need what's called a starter template, which is just kind of like a place to put Bootstrap. And again, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of how Bootstrap works, because, uh, well, it's kind of beyond the scope of, of your class right now. You don't really need to worry about it. Um, but many of you already know how it works, and you should learn it. It's, it's great. You can look at some of my other videos on how to, how to work with Bootstrap. But uh, anyway, we'll go to getting started. And we're going to get this basic template right here. And this actually doesn't have a nav bar, which we might want, so maybe we'll just do this. 
inspect their starter template. You actually just copy the entire thing. And we'll make a new file. We'll paste what we just got and we'll save it into the Watson folder that we just made. And we'll call it index.html. All right, so if you see they've got like these references to bootstrap stuff just get rid of the leading things it should just be like css slash this too just js slash just like that if you're not aware those are relative links to files that are have a different structure on your program now since you kind of custom made it so anyway not important. All right, so if you open it up, you'll see a blank little template um, to change where that nav bar is sitting. You can change it to be a nav bar dash static dash top. It'll fix it. All right, now you need an API key. So in your Alchemy language place, you go to free API key. You'll go to this form, and you'll get your free API key. You need to, um, you know, fill this out, tell them a little bit of information you're trying to solve here, um, and, and they'll send you your API key, and, you, and you'll need that to make uh, Watson calls. We'll get back to that in just one moment. Uh, and we also need to know what we're going to need to send to Watson to have it perform this for us. So it is pretty straightforward, actually. It's a simple AJAX call, which, again, I'll show you how to do in just a moment. Um, and let's just, for keyword extraction, it's easiest if we just do text, but you can actually give it an, a URL of an entire web page if you want. But we're just going to st stick to text for this because we want to, again, try to figure out a way to score free response questions automatically. And uh, if you make the following call with Ajax with these arguments, it'll do it for you. It's actually really simple. So let's put together a basic thing. Remember our form that we wanted to eventually have looks like this. So we need to get like a bootstrap form component um, to get to get it in there. Um, I'm actually going to delete. I'm going to delete what's in here because we don't need their placeholder text. We need our own text. And bootstrap form components. You can look them up on the bootstrap site. Bootstrap text area. Or my inspect window. All right, they're pretty straightforward. Input loop bootstrap text area like this. This is what we want, just like that. So I'm going to steal that code. All right, and this is label four. We're going to change this to, we'll say, exemplar. And we'll say exemplar. And we'll say, submit your exemplar response. Okay, so if we, oh, we probably need a button too, don't we? Yeah, we're going to need a button at the end of it to submit. So button, let's get a bootstrap button, a nice and shiny bootstrap button. Right there, look at that thing. There you go. I'm going a little fast here again because um, this is stuff that we need to, you know, some, some people watching this video already know where to find all this stuff. Um, you know, so if, you, if you're using Bootstrap for the first time, I'm sorry this is a little bit fast for you, but there's a lot more documentation on our YouTube channel in the quarter one playlist um, that describes a lot about how to do all this Bootstrap stuff. So if it's a little bit overwhelming because of the speed, sorry. Um, and you might want to just go back and check out some of those videos. Anyway, let's see what this looks like. We got a response, and we got a button that says primary. That's not right. We want to say submit. But other than that, looking good. Great. All right, now we need to do some JavaScript. So let's make a new file. We're going to save it into our JS folder. We'll call it myjs.js. Doink. And we'll link it in our index file all the way at the bottom, js slash 
my js.js. I got these. <laughs> oh, bless me. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. So we need to run a JavaScript function when this button is clicked. So we'll say on click equals uh, submit data. And we'll make a submit data function in JavaScript, which is similar to how you do it in Java. You would type var submit data equals function. And I'm just going to do a console log, which is just system.out.print uh, test to just make sure that this is actually running when the data is submitted. So the console is in the inspect element area over here, and we hit submit. And sure enough, there's test. Great. All right, so now we got to do the submission part. So we know the base URL for the API call. It was this text get ranked keywords. So I'm going to say variable URL uh, base equals that. And it said that we have two parameters we need to require API key and text. You can guess what they are. The API key is the key you registered for, which should be in your email by now. Text is the text that the user has submitted. So we need to append these in HTTP format to our URL base. Luckily, it's pretty easy. You just put a question mark at the end of this thing here. And then we want to add linearly all these values. So I'm going to get my API key. Remember, you should use your own. But mine, I will get so variable API key. And we can build the URL like so. URL base equals URL base plus we want to say in the exact match of the argument that they list here, so lowercase API key, we want to see API key equals and we want to add on to that our value. All right. Now we need to get the text out of the text area, which luckily is easy as well. We do need to give it an ID, though. Oh, it does have an ID exemplar. Okay. So we can say variable input text equals, and this is a little bit of funny stuff, but... Uh, you can use jQuery, so jQuery, you do money sign, parentheses, quotes, pound sign, the ID, dot val. That'll get the value of what's in there. Now we can continue adding on to URL base. URL base equals URL base plus, when we do HTTP and you have multiple arguments, you need an and sign, and it needs to be called text because that's what it says here, equals and then we add on our input text value. All right, super, so our URL base is built. Let's just log it real quick to make sure that it's working correctly so we can see the format. The quick brown fox. So let's see, here, here's the, what the URL we're gonna call is, question mark is there, good, API key equals, here's our key, and text equals some stuff. Awesome. Are we missing anything? Let's see. Ooh, the text needs to be URI encoded. So we do need to do a little bit of an extra step there. I forgot exactly how I did that. Uh, right here, encode URI component. So we do need to just encode U URI component, which is a baked in JavaScript function. Let's just run it one more time to make sure that worked. Super. URI just, instead of spaces, it does percent %20 for spaces, and it makes so that there are no spaces in the URL, which are not allowed. So there's that. All right, so our URL is all ready. Now we need to send it. Sending HTTP requests in jQuery is super easy. You do money sign dot Ajax. Parentheses. Curly brace. And AJAX is, just stands for an asynchron asynchronous uh, HTTP call. Um, so we need to specify a URL for it to go to, and that's URL base. We need to 
What else do we need to do? Oh, we need to tell it it's a, yeah. We need to tell it it's a post function. So type post. There are a couple types of HTTP requests. Post is one. Get is another. Uh, there's a few others. Those are the most popular. Set. Uh -oh. Anyway, we need to also finally tell it what to do with the return object uh, once Watson does his magic. So we're going to say success. We're just going to assume we're successful here. Um, you can assume that. It's okay. You guys are pretty successful. Uh, we're going to say console.log data. Data is what gets sent back from wherever you're making the AJAX call. So AJAX is like sending information somewhere else, and this callback function is what happens when that information comes back. So, theoretically, this should show us something. Let's try it. Submit your exemplar response. Ooh, here's one that'll drive bio teachers crazy. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. All right, let's see what it gives us. It gives us this little thing. What's that? Hmm, this is interesting. Oh, you know what? It's in a. Uh, it's in XML format. I think we can change that to JSON. Let's see. Oh, output mode. Yeah, we don't want XML, we want JSON. So we also, we just have to add that onto URL base at the end here. So URL base equals and out, oh, equals URL base plus and output mode. Oop, capital M for mode equals JSON because we want it in JSON format. One last try. Forgive the sirens. All right, here's the return object. So we have status OK means it's good. Total transactions, one. Keywords. It looks like it's found an array of three keywords. Mitochondria is the most relevant. Powerhouse is the second most relevant, and object or cell is the third most relevant. So can you see how this is like a textual representation of their demonstration over here? We're getting this information in text into our own application, which you can now put anywhere you want. That's pretty magical. You now have the ability to use any of Watson's APIs, just the same exact way, or at least you'll have to get a different API key for each one, but Alchemy Language is certainly one of the more popular ones. You can use it in any way you can think of, and that is really, really crazy. So that's all we have for this video. In the next video, we'll do the next part of this where we kind of save these results and sort of develop our own little learning machine based on what's going on here. But that's too much for now. So, until next time, happy coding!